Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here with volume 7 of the Marilyn Monroe Scrapbook Tour. As you can see, this is another one of those books from Macro Cash and Carry that I got. I had two of these really big ones. After this, we'll go back to um, albums from WH Smiths. So we're slowly getting through the collection. I hope you're enjoying these. So let's have a quick look. So here we have um, our usual first cover photo of Marilyn. This is one of those Earl Moran photographs. So the next two pages are, um, well the next few pages really are pictures of a Jerry Hallowell singing happy birthday to Prince Charles for his 50th birthday back in 1995. Of course she was compared to Marilyn because Marilyn sang it for President Kennedy. <laughs> Um, on the next page we have some little tiny articles about films up here and then at the top is a review from the Daily Mail of a play called Jackie and of course because it's Jackie Kennedy there was something about Marilyn. On the next page uh, it says Joe DiMaggio's Sad and Lonely Battle of the Life, sorry, this is 1998, not 1995, sorry. Um, uh, and it's just an article about Joe, and it says, basically, estranged from his son, missing, Mar missing his fans and still in love with Marilyn. So this was getting towards the end of Joe DiMaggio's life at this point. And the next, again, it's uh, an article about... Um, Jerry Hallowell singing happy birthday to uh, Prince Charles. Uh, Sunday Times, November 1998, a rumour that Marion had breast implants, which is absolutely rubbish. Uh, absolutely rubbish. Again, this has come from somebody like Donald H. Wolf, who's just always spouted nonsense. Again, we have another uh, Ennio Marchetto. Review dressed up for this time, it's Marilyn Seven Year Rich. We have the girl that played Leanne Battersby dressed up as various stars. She dressed up as Marilyn in the um, Milton Green ballerina sit in, and then on the next page, she does uh, again Marilyn and Aud there's Audrey Hepburn. Oops, and then on the next page, we've got Farrah Fawcett and uh, Sigourney Weaver and various other people. So. Then we have some small articles. The first one at the top um, is the everlasting allure of Marilyn Monroe. That's this one. Uh, and this is because she was named Playboy's sexiest star of the 20th century. Of course we were still in the 20th century at that point. And again, all these articles on this page are about that. Are these the sexiest of the century? Jean Harlow was at number 10. And then again, on this page, there was one that, uh, that we'll have a look at in a minute. So we've mostly blondes and mostly dead. And then it's just where all the Brits, but of course Playboy is predominantly red by Americans. So they would have um, generally done about you know, it would have been a poll of American people, mostly. The next article is, again, about Joe DiMaggio and is from the Daily Fail. And is titled, The Man Who Adored Marilyn Was Set to Murder Kennedy to Prove It. This is about uh, Joe DiMaggio. But again, I do believe that this is just a speculation. I don't think that Joe ever would have murdered anybody. Um, As you can see, this is quite a big scrapbook, so it doesn't really... It's very hard to get it all in, so I'm just going to put the... That's better, we can see it a bit better now. I can always take it down if we need to look at something a bit closer. We've got an almost back page, but it's not. Um, there's a little article here. £25,000 for a letter of longing by Marilyn. And this was a letter that was sent when she was 16 years old to Grace McKee Goddard, who was her guardian at the time. And then the next one is, 
an obsession with Marilyn. Boss jailed after turning to fraud to buy memorabilia. This again is about a manager director of a company who used, who embezzled funds from his company to buy not just Marilyn memorabilia, but also the stuff of the Beatles and, and, and so on. Then we've got a uh, two page spread or three page spread, two page, two, yeah, three pages, I think, of more called Some Like It Reshot. And this is about dressing somebody up as Marilyn and also a few other people to dress up as uh, the cast of Some Like It Hot. And there's the original picture there. And then there's the picture that they created. So, and, it, and then on the next page, we've got the National Enquirer stars who live in haunted houses and the ghosts who do the haunting. So this is about various people who live in haunted houses, obviously, and the stars that haunt them. So for instance, I think it's uh, Marilyn stalking the, I would say probably the um, Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah, the Roosevelt Hotel, rather than her house, so. The next is a photocopied page from a magazine called um, The Perfume Collection, and it was volume one, and it was about women and their perfumes, so it was about Marilyn and Chanel number five. And then this is um, just a fashion show uh, image. As you can see, that Marilyn's image has been used again in her eyes. Um, yeah, silly really. On the next page we have an article called Original Cynic, and this is just various things that people allegedly said, various quotes from famous people, including Marilyn. The next bit is, uh, again, the Daily Fail. Revealed the man, the woman who made a sex goddess of Marilyn Monroe. This is allegedly about uh, Lily Sincere having an affair. Um, this was rubbish uh, story, which was perpetuated from by uh, her wife, uh, Ted Jordan. However, Lily Sincere, before her death, actually laughed at the notion of her having an affair with Marilyn. She thought it was ridiculous, but. Um, the fact that it's got Ted Jordan mentioned in it, it's like, f no, please go away. Next page, we are now into 1999 and we are onto the death of uh, Joe DiMaggio. So this is March 99 and this is from the Daily Mail. No ordinary Joe, but he couldn't t tame Marilyn. There's quite a lot about Joe DiMaggio over the next few pages. 1999 takes up several scrapbooks because that was also the year of the big Christie's auction. Uh, Daily Express, Jolton Joe's gone away uh, to be re reunited with his beloved Marilyn. Farewell to a consummate gentleman on and off the field. And the son, the son just sums it up for me. Marilyn's ex-hubby Joe dead. Joe was a star in his own right. He was an amazing personality. He was an amazing baseball player. He deserved better than that headline. And then we've got uh, Jot and Joe has left and gone away. A lot of these are obituary style pictures, but most uh, pages, but most of them have Joe's marriage photo to Marilyn. So this one, this is hard to show because it's, it is sideways. The King of Diamonds. And, oops, excuse me, just hitting the tripods. And again, more obituaries. So we've got Guardian Sport, There'll Never Be Another Joe. American Mons DiMaggio, The Modest Legend. And there's another big one on Joe there. And these are the obituaries of Joe DiMaggio that were published in the British press uh, during, uh, in 1999. We still haven't finished, there's another one here. Oh God, I wish I'd stopped, stopped hitting the tripod. The Times, America mourns the death of baseball hero DiMaggio. Again, another article on DiMaggio from the, the Times. Again, uh, this was the Daily Mirror from the sports section. A nation turns its lonely eyes to Joe DiMaggio. Then there's a little letter about Joe DiMaggio's death.
and something else which I'm not very, you know, it goes on about Robert Slater who, again, liar, liar, pants on fire. There you go, there's quite a lot of those in the Marilyn world. Uh, National Enquirer to the very end, Jolt and Joe went to bat for sick kids. And then we move away from that and then there's an article called Jet Set Goes Surfing Down to the Shops. And apparently they, they, they alleged that Mario's house was on sale in 1999. It wasn't actually, it was a few years later. It did go on the market and has been on the market again since that time as well. You might see a bit about that later. Are you fond of blonde? So this is about various blondes over the years, including Marilyn, nice big picture of her there in the middle. Um, blonde trivia and questions. This one just says blondes have more stereotypes, so it's, there's Jean Harlow and Melinda Messenger, Pam Anson and Marilyn. And then there's Marilyn and the modern myth that all blondes are bimbo. Which of course they're not, and she wasn't, so I need to fill in these gaps with some pictures, I know. What's the alternative is usually a medical column and about, I think, breathing on this one and, um, yeah, breathing techniques. So uh, why a picture of Marilyn, even though it's a, a drawing, I don't know. Uh, Monroe Fable laid to rest, the Daily Mail. Um, somebody asked the question, was, Mar was Joe DiMaggio buried in Hollywood next to Marilyn? No, basically. <laughs> and in fact, I wrote a letter, a little bit there saying, because the, um, so the myth perpetuated partly because of the war crypt next to Marilyn being empty, but it had been bought by Hugh Hefner, who now rests there. Now we get on to the first set of in, uh, internet news. So this is when internet news and the internet we started becoming very big. There were so many articles published around the world on the internet that I started downloading and printing them up. Um, that, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> that was sort of a phase I went through. Um, however, I did do it, especially at this point, because this is, this first one is from the Electronic Telegraph from June 1999, and it's the first article I have about the Christie's sale. So as you can see, it's quite a long article, um, and you will see a lot of those over the next few scrapbooks, and then it'll stop dead, and there won't be any more, so. And the reason I started to stop doing them is there's not a lot to look at on them, it's quite boring just type. Um, then the next page, we've got 20th century icons. Diana Monroe and Guevara, heroes of the last 100 years. And then on the next page, we've got the secrets of sex. Scientists discover the secret of sex appeal. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> the next one is about insignificance. And I'm hitting the tripod again, because it's one of those sideways ones, which I've done. Um, and it's just about, it's from the Times Art section about uh, insignificance being um, performed at Chichester Minerva Theatre and does it say Sharon Small played the man in base character on the next page we have a New York Post article that I downloaded from the internet. As you can see this is why I did it, so I could get some uh, international uh, ma uh, information. And this was, the tragedy won't keep Marilyn's JFK dress off the block. The tragedy was obviously that in 1999 uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. and his wife were killed in a plane crash. Um, sad, very sadly. Very sad. But this was after that they'd announced that the Kennedy dress would be one of the items for sale at the Christie's auction in 1999. Um, yes, there will be volumes and volumes, <laughs> reams and reams of paper on the Christie's auction, including some from America as well, because I was lucky enough to go there, but more about that on the, when we get to the Christie's auction in October. We're only in July. Again, this is all about, that's the second page of that. This is the press release from Christie's about the, auction that was held in 1999 at Christie's New York and as you can see it's quite a long article again more about the auction and on this side again 
Monroe Memorabilia up for bid. And basically, I mean, there's another picture of the Kennedy dress, there's a picture of her piano, and so on. And that one was July. We're coming to the end of this book now because we are on to all of these. Carrying on with that, that's another one of her, her dresses, um, which we'll probably see better pictures of, but we will see better pictures of later on. Uh, this one is from Newsday and Monroe Collection. The Monroe Collection really, I can't speak, reveals the legend's personal side. So it's just about, you know, not just about the costumes and the dresses, like the Kennedy dress, um, but her, her piano, um, uh, the eternity band that Joe DiMaggio gave her, her driver's license, uh, her weight bench. I mean, so much of this said stuff was sold. And it was very sad, but it was also fascinating. And the last page just continues on with um, some of those items. So some of her books. So a first edition of Jack Kerouac's On the Road. A copy of The Fall by Camus. Little Engine That Could. So it's all about her library. And, and also about the fans that went to see the exhibition in, in New York um, and then it says at the bottom it tells you that we'll go to Los Angeles August the 20th to 24th then London 19th to the 22nd and then Paris from the 5th to the 7th of October before returning to New York. I did go to see it in London as well as New York so I was very very lucky. So that is volume 7. We are up to the Christie's auction in 1999. Um, so you can imagine there's gonna be a lot more information on the Christie's auction coming up in volume eight of the Marilyn Scrapbook Tours and flip throughs. I hope you're enjoying these because for me, it's, it's really interesting just to look through them again. I haven't, I don't look through them that often. I do every now and again and I, it is so nice to go and look through every page. So I really hope you're enjoying this. Um, if you want me to continue, I will, just let me know. Um, but we still got a lot of scrapbooks to go. It's amazing to me that she's been dead over 50 years. We were in 19, well, she died in 1962. So she's been dead over 55 years. And the majority of these scrapbooks have been created from articles that appeared from 1990 onwards. So in the last 27 years. Although I do have articles that go back to the 50s in here and obviously the 70s and 60s, 70s and 80s. The majority were from 1990 onwards because that's when I started collecting. So yes, to me it's amazing and I love it and I'm going to keep collecting. And uh, maybe when I, I will do, do a video showing you how I put my scrapbooks together, I'm thinking of doing that when I'm on my maternity leave because I've got another scrapbook that I haven't finished yet and also give you some hints and tips on what I look for when I'm buying some clippings from various places. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be back with volume 8 fairly soon. Um, have a lovely day and see all you Marilynettes and Marilyn fans later. See ya! Bye bye now!